Center Board Attorneys cannot be Regional Center staff. We no longer have a, a staff person who's an attorney advise the board. Um, and then Regional Center Boards must meet with DDS on request. So there was some issue there. So to clarify that, if the, if the department director wants to meet with the board of directors of a regional center, they must meet with them. And then regional center boards must annually meet on performance contract and plan based uh, on the input. There's just additional um, steps now that have to occur with regional center boards related to the performance contract that they didn't have before. So it just added to that, but very similar to what was already in place. Any questions on those? No, very clear. Thank you very much. Systemic improvement. Oh. Thank you. Okay, for systemic improvement, it's all trailer bill language. So we're gonna start with the uh, system reforms on stakeholder meetings, and that's trailer bill section nine. Um, this was added to require the department beginning in summer of 2019. Uh, consult with board and a balance group of stakeholder, stakeholders, including but not limited to representatives of the DS task force, the rates work group um, of the DS task force, the legislative staff from the fiscal and relevant policy committees of the legislature, the legislative analyst office, the association of regional center agencies or ARCA, uh, the state council on development of disabilities, the department of rehabilitation, and disability rights California to discuss systems reforms, including fiscal reform, um, and the focus of this discussion shall be on how to create sustainable, innovative, cost-effective, consumer-focused outcomes um, to best serve uh, our consumers. And for purpose of, purposes of implementing this section, the department must also do a list of the following, so I'm going to read those off. Um, they must consider a wide variety of perspectives of consumers, families, and service providers to discuss the potential outcomes associated with different approaches to system reform. They must also engage with consumers, family, and service providers across different geographic regions of the state, including urban and rural areas, and form diverse racial and ethnic backgrounds, consumer age groups, consumer diagnoses, and service categories. They must also identify key consumer outcomes and measurable targets to achieve through these reforms. Um, they also must evaluate compliance with federal rules relating to home and community-based services and how the department plans to redesign services that are not compliant with these rules. They must also discuss how feedback may be collected about these reforms and how this information may be used to make changes and adopt the system over time. Uh, the department must also report on these progresses of um, the efforts during December 2021 um, during their budget hearing process. By October 1st, 2019, they were supposed to post on the internet a summary of the public comments, departmental response to those comments, and any appropriate necessary changes to the rate models contained in the rate study um, that were submitted. So that is the first bullet point. Um, the next trailer bill language is on co-payments, co-insurance, and deductibles for early start consumers. Um, and this was amended to state that if the service support is provided um, in the consumer's individualized family plan under a California Early Intervention Services Act, it must be paid for in whole or in part by the health services plan or health insurance policy of the consumer's parent, guardian, or caregiver. The regional center must also pay any applicable co-payment, co-insurance, or deductible associated with the service or support for which the parent, guardian, or caregiver is, was, is responsible if both the following conditions are met. So the consumer is either covered by the parent's guardian's or caregiver's health care service plan or health insurance policy and there is no other third party having the liability of cost of service support as provided. Um, so implementation on this is that consideration of the family's annual income is no longer a requirement when paying for co-payments, co-insurance, or deductibles. Uh, the next one is on service provider rate increases, which I know we've talked and heard a lot about. Um, so on this one, it is that the department must provide a rate increase effective January 1st, 2020 for specified services which are set by the department um, through negotiations between the regional centers and service providers. And the rate increase should be applied to the rates effective December 31st, 2019, unless the amount of one-time rate increase for developmental services are authorized in Chapter 19. Um, the rate increase shall be applied as a percentage, and this percentage should be the same for all providers within each service category as established by the department and set forth by a sub sub supplemental rate increase schedule 
posed by the Department Internet website. Um, just some extra information on that. The implementation of these provisions should be suspended on December 31st, 2021. However, if the determination by the Department of Finance estimates the general fund revenue increases, um, sorry, if the general fund revenues and expenditures that accompany the May revision, which is going to be put out in May 14th, 2021, contain a projected annual gen general fund revenue that exceeds the projected annual general fund expenditures in 2021 and 2022 to 2023 fiscal years, but the sum of the general fund monies appropriate for all programs are subject to suspension in December 31st, 2021, then the implementation of the section shall not be suspended. So basically, if there's extra money or more money that um, for the expenditures, then they're going to change the sunset date on that. Do I have that correct? Okay. Um, same for the uniform holiday schedule. So the suspension of that is going to be through December 31st, 2021. If there's enough money to cover um, in the May 14th, 2021 revenue projections report, then they're going to um, continue the suspension on that. Let's see what the next topic is. Ooh. Oh, transparency. Ooh, we should have had our compliance manager do this section. <laughs> so uh, under the topic of transparency, all of these are covered in the trailer bill language. So they all um, happen already. Uh, DVS to review regional center assessment tools and um, public availability is required. So. If we have assessment tools on determining whether or not somebody gets a service or how much, then we must put that assessment tool on our website and make it available. Uh, and, and the department will review them all. Uh, regional centers will meet, post, and report on the national core indicator um, data, the outcomes, and uh, we'll have more uh, description of exactly how to do uh, the new ways, but. Uh, We'll continue to post information, the outcomes statewide, and our, our regional center will have on our website our data. Um, and regional centers must post individual dashboards. We're having discussions now. The department has a dashboard, and the dashboard is meant to show you some highlighted data about um, each regional center, and you can drill down and ask for your regional center's data on the DDS website. And uh, regional centers will also uh, create a dashboard as well. So there's some question about whether or not regional centers might just um, link to that one, or would we want to have additional, or would we have to have additional? That still needs to be worked out. Uh, regional centers must uh, post transportation, personal assistant, SLS, and ILS assessment tools. That's still the same thing as posting assessment tools. Uh, DDS may issue directives. Uh, to protect the rights and health and uh, safety, the welfare of consumers. So that's new. The department didn't have to, um, or didn't have the authority to create directives to regional centers, and now it does. Um, DDS, uh, or regional centers must give DDS copies of vendor corrective action plans and sanctions. Uh, so now that just is something we have to report to the department. Um, the DDS will uh, develop and regional centers must issue intake packets for Early Start and for uh, Lanterman uh, consumers. So, uh, and that will just be a description of all the services that are available to uh, people with developmental disabilities and families. Uh, they're, they're creating that and we'll hand that out. Uh, regional centers to provide IPP agreements, agreement forms for uh, for consumers or the representatives to sign. So at the IPP meeting, we would just uh, let people know these are the things that we agreed to in the IPP. These are the services you'll receive when you'll receive them and just sign them. So we've been doing that here for quite some time. Yeah. But um, it is now something that all regional centers will do. Any questions on any of those? No, moving right along. Moving right along. We are going to be on time. Regional Center and Provider Operations. Still me? Take us so, off, Tony. You're going to close it out. Yeah. Okay, I'll close it out. First three have already been covered, so that's fast. Um, the 
Fourth one, 1199 State Property Fairview Developmental Center. Fairview Developmental Center is closing, so this bill just has a process, requires a process for the community to give input for what to do with that property. And that will now have to happen. Uh, health and Human Services Information Sharing. This required different departments to share information uh, across departments and uh, in these particular departments, aging, health care services, public health, social services, uh, emergency medical authority. And this was uh, vetoed because the governor said that can already do this. They can already share information with one another, which is kind of good that it kind of clarifies that they can and should already do that. And then finally, uh, DBS and the legislature, um, this was passed in trailer bill language and it just requires the Department of Developmental Services to report back to the legislature on um, a quarterly basis to, their, to the staffers on uh, the uh, progress in the system. So um, DBS will identify key regional center indicators and they will report to them to the legislature quarterly. And that's our chair of our committee and that's the end of our presentation with five minutes to spare. Are there questions? Not a single question, because we were that clear. Well, I thank everybody uh, for being here today. We, um, we will always try to make this information available. As you can imagine, new bills are already out. And so by the end of February, we'll have an idea of what all those bills will be. And then uh, this committee will continue to analyze that. Their next project, though, is to analyze the budget and then uh, uh, provide some presentation on what's in the government's budget. So, thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you. committee members, for being here today. Thank you, all of you.